What pancakes do pandas like best? Today we're gonna find out. Is it pancakes with butter and maple syrup? Pancakes with berries? Pancakes with chocolate chips? Or is it pa What? This isn't about real pandas? Pandas is a Python library for data analysis and manipulation. Okay, that changes some things. Before we dive into some fun with pandas, and pandas is a lot of fun, I want to let you know that this video is covering the content related to the basic data exploration module on the Kaggle Intro to Machine Learning course. It's always good to know what you're getting into before you start something, and one of the best ways to have an idea of what you're getting into is to ask a lot of questions. So let's think for a minute about our pancakes problem. What we're trying to do with our pancakes problem is map a pancake recipe to its rating. So what we can hypothetically do is go out and collect all of this recipe data for pancakes and organize that data into something called a data frame. And once we have our data organized into a data frame, we can begin to use some Python code to ask and answer various questions about our data. Now, you can ask almost an infinite number of questions, but some of my favorite starting questions are things like, what are the names of the variables in my data? How many variables are in my data frame? How many observations or rows are in my data frame? I can also ask things like, what do the first few rows of my data frame look like? Are there any missing values in my data frame? I can even ask, what's the average value of a numerical variable within my data frame? Let's try answering some of these questions on our pancake data set by using the pandas library. So for example, if we want to know how many observations and variables or rows and columns are in our data frame, we can use pancakes.shape to see that we have x rows and y columns. To look at the names of the variables in our pancake data frame, we can run pancakes.columns. And if we want to look at the first few rows of our data frame, well then we can use pancakes.head with a set of parentheses. What if there's missing data? We can explore that by running pancakes.isNull with the set of parentheses, dot sum parentheses. We can also get a table with summary values by using pancakes dot describe the set of parentheses. Let's take everything we just did with our pancake data and apply it to our Melbourne housing data. So when we wanted to see the number of rows and columns we had, what we can run is something called dot shape. So in this case, we would take Melbourne underscore data dot shape, and then we can see the shape of our data. I see that I have 13,580 rows of data and 21 columns of data. And let's remember that those rows are observations and that the columns are our variables. So I have 21 different variables in this data set. So I have 21 different columns in this data set, but it doesn't really help me to know that I have columns if I don't know the names of the columns. So the way that I find that out is by running Melbourne underscore data dot columns. And then what we see here is a list of all of the different column headers that I have. So these are all of the variables that are present in my data set. If I'm curious as to what the first few rows of my data set look like, I can run Melbourne underscore data dot head. And as you can see, this is going to give me the column headers as well as the first five rows of the data. So I've got things like suburb, address, rooms, type, price, method, seller, all kinds of information. And this seems to me to be corresponding to what I would expect in a housing data set. So using head is a great way to get an initial idea if your data kind of looks like you expect it to. This is a really great opportunity to take a quick glance at things and make sure nothing seems too out of sorts. Now, what if there's missing data? Well, we can explore that by running Melbourne underscore data dot is null with open parentheses dot sum and another set of open parentheses. And what this is going to do is it's going to go through our entire data set and it's going to look for every instance of missing data. It's going to add those up and it's going to return it to me in this kind of output. So as we can see, there's definitely data points missing in our data frame and missing data can cause problems in model building, but that's something we won't have to worry about in this course because we're just going to filter out all rows with our missing data. We can also get a table with summary values by using Melbourne underscore data dot describe with the open parentheses. And this is really great because we can quickly scan it and get an idea of things like the range of something. So if we look at the price column, our second column, what I can see is that I've got 
an average price, I've got a standard deviation, and then I've got my minimum price, my maximum price, and my quartile prices. And this is just a really great idea to get an idea of the distribution of any given variable. Now this might look like the same table we got when we ran Melbourne underscore data dot head, but it is different. So describe is going to give you summary statistics on your data set, whereas head is going to give you insight or a glimpse into the first five rows of your data set. Okay, so after everything we've covered in this video, combined with what's on the Kaggle Learn Basic Data Exploration course, here's a summary of what we've learned today. One, Pandas is the primary tool we use for exploring and manipulating data, abbreviated in code as PD. Data frames hold the type of data we think of as a table. Number three, we can load data using the pd.read underscore csv open parentheses function, and we can view a summary of our data using the describe function. We have covered a ton of information related to the basic data exploration module as part of our machine learning journey. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out and complete the associated coding exercise on Kaggle Learn. I hope you've learned something in this video. I know I have, and I've really enjoyed learning with you. So when you're ready, meet me in the next video where we're going to build our first machine learning model.